our task is to use the numerical FDTD in simulating anti-reflection coding on silicon, for example, in solar cell application. We use two approaches. One is the thin film approach. So we have a quarter wave thin film on a absorptive silicon substrate. And uh, by the thin film theory, we know that if we wish to achieve anti-reflection at 500 nanometers, the refractive index of the film should be square root of the index of the substrate, the index of silicon, the real part is about 4, which gives us the index of the film of 2.07. And based on this refractive index, the thickness should be about 60 nanometers. The other approach will be the nanostructured coating, where we deposit uh, pyramids on silicon and the periodicity of the pyramids will be less than the wavelength. In our case, we select periodicity of 100 nanometers. And let's see how this model is constructed in numerical. Here is the layout of the simulation graphical user interface and uh, our construction. First, we define the structures. We define the simulation space. We set up the sources to excite the structure and use the monitors to detect the reflection or transmission. From the structures, we have several options and let's select a rectangle. We right click, get edit properties. We have the geometry. Uh, we are working in X, Y plane. So in the Z direction, we can set everything to zero. Let's put the width of the rectangle as 100 nanometers and span of the substrate in y direction to, let's say, 2 micrometers. Then we select the material. We can either put a constant index, but since we are interested in silicon, we select from the list the silicon model and apply. We are ready to go. Next, we set the simulation space. We define the region. Let's put the properties. First of all, we are working in two dimensions. Our geometry, uh, let's put the x to the same. Our span would be 100 nanometers. Center to the top of the substrate. And in y direction, we could span about four micrometers. So now we have this very thin substrate, which has a width of 100 nanometers. And the simulation space has the absorbing boundaries in all the interfaces. And let's change this by selecting the simulation space editing. We can select all the different settings. Let's increase the mesh accuracy a bit. Set the boundary conditions. So in top and bottom, 
we should have the perfectly matched layers. But in the other boundaries, we put periodic boundaries done here. So now in we have the perfectly matched layer. In X boundaries, we have the periodic condition so that in reality, this part is replicated in space to infinity. Here we have the perfectly matched layer as well. Next, we set up a source. We select a plane wave geometry. One is zero. The span can be the same width as the boundaries, but it can be as well more. So let's put one here. And the y direction was around two. So let's see. Arrows define the polarization, which in this case is the Tm polarization, since the electric field is in the plane of incidence. But the wave is going to the wrong direction, so let's change that. So we have plane wave, you can set the amplitude and phase. Uh, we are injecting towards the y axis, but in our geometry it's backward. Then we can set the frequency we are interested in. Let's put from 300 nanometers up to 1 micrometer. Now we need a monitor. Let's select frequency, domain, field, and power. And we are <coughs> monitoring the reflection. So we have to set the reflection monitor on top of the plane wave source. Then from the monitor, let's uh, change the global monitor settings and use 50 wavelength points at the desired interval. And uh, now we can check what does the memory requirement look like? 100 megabytes, so this is just fine. So let's run it. And now from the monitor, we can take visualize T and see that our reflection is all the time more than 30% at about 40% at the 500 nanometer wavelength. So let's add the first anti reflection option. We have to change to layout, include a rectangle. Edit. Uh, the top of the substrate is, is at one micron. Span is 100 nanometers. Why should be 30 and then the Y span is 60 nanometers. And once more, let's add, add the material properties. We defined 2.00 as the defined desired refractive index. Let's apply this one and set the geometry like this. Let's run this.
take a look at the monitor. And we can see that the reflection curve is how we estimated it to be. So the minimum is at 500 nanometers, approximately zero, and overall the reflectance is down. Let's construct the nanostructured surface coating. Again, change to layout delete this component from the structures. We'll take a triangle. Edit its properties. We rotate around x axis. triangle with a base width of 100 nanometers and height 200 nanometers. And as a material, we select again silicon. Let's run this. Let's check the monitor. And now we'll see that overall the wavelength range, the reflectance is below 3%. However, it's still increasing towards the long wavelength range. And uh, it, that part could be improved if the height of the pyramid is changed. But we can see that the efficiency is much better than the single anti-reflection coating thin film.